Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Karen, well, calm has been restored to stock and bond markets for now after the hotter than estimated inflation report for March. Yesterday, a gauge of global bonds suffered its worst performance since February of last year. Investors now bet the Fed will cut interest rates just twice this year. Neil Dutta, partner at Renaissance Macro Research, talked about the difference between the consumer price index and the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, the PCE. You know, there are differences of scope between the CPI data and the PCE data. And the CPI data is running, uh, you know, over a full percentage point higher than PCE. That's about twice, almost three times what's normal. And so, you know, in some respects, I do think the market might be overstating how important CPI is for the Fed's reaction function. But, uh, you know, uh, it's a bad number. Renaissance macro research partner Neil Dutta now expects the Fed to cut rates twice this year with the first move in July. Well, Nathan, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers says cutting rates would be a mistake. In fact, Summers says a rate hike may be necessary. You have to take seriously the possibility that the next rate move will be upwards rather than uh, downwards. And anything could happen. Markets could crash. The indicators could turn down. But on current facts, a rate cut in June it seems to me would be a dangerous and egregious error. Former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers estimates the chance of a rate hike in the 15 to 25 percent range. Hear the full conversation on the Bloomberg Wall Street Week podcast, downloaded on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Well, Karen, investors now turn their attention to another key inflation reading, the March Producer Price Index. Let's get a preview from Bloomberg's Michael McKee. The producer price index is forecast to come in cooler than yesterday's consumer price index, and that may matter more to the Fed than the CPI. The reason the Fed's target is based on a third inflation measure, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index, or PCE, it tends to run lower than CPI. Some sectors in the PPI feed directly into PCE. For example, while CPI measures what consumers pay for medical care, PPI and PCE measure what insurance companies pay. So today's numbers matter for analysts and central bankers as they try to understand the direction of inflation. A strong PPI would reinforce pessimism about rate cuts. A weak one would revive hope. Michael McKee, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Mike, thanks. Well, interest rates are very much in focus overseas. Later this morning, the European Central Bank makes a policy decision, and we go to London and get a preview with Bloomberg's Ewan Potts. Ewan, good morning. Karen and Nathan, borrowing costs across the euro area are set to be held at a record high today of 4%. But investors are expecting the ECB to further lay the ground for cuts to get underway in June. Euro area inflation is within sight of the 2% target, but President Christine Lagarde has indicated they'll need more confidence in the data, particularly wage growth, by the middle of the year. That decision comes at 7.15 Eastern Time. In London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Radio. OK, Ewan, thank you. Oil is on the rise on speculation hostility may be escalating in the Middle East. Sources say the U.S. and its allies think an Iranian strike on Israel is imminent. We get more from Bloomberg Israel Bureau Chief Ethan Bronner. This is in retaliation for an attack that is presumed to have been done by Israel about 10 days ago uh, in Damascus on a diplomatic compound uh, in which uh, uh, seven uh, people were killed. The, the key point there is that the two of the people were uh, Revolutionary Guard commanders, that is to say Iranian commanders of militias in in, uh, Lebanon and Syria. Bloomberg's Ethan Bronner says Israeli officials have publicly threatened Iran that if it hits Israeli soil, Israel will hit Iranian soil. Well, back here in the U.S., Nathan, the Biden administration is cracking down on unlicensed gun dealers. And we get the very latest at Bloomberg's John Tucker. John, good morning. And Karen, the Biden administration is issuing a rule designed to close a gap that allows gun buyers to avoid background checks. It targets the so-called gun show loophole by expanding the definition of who must obtain a license to engage in firearm sales. The regulation specifically singles out sellers online and at gun shows where the background 
background checks are often not conducted. According to a White House official, more than 20,000 individuals engaged in unlicensed dealings could be affected by the changes. The president has seized on the issue of gun violence to contrast himself with former President Trump and Republicans in his State of the Union address in March. Mr. Biden touted his administration's efforts to address gun crime, including establishing the first ever Office of Gun Violence Prevention. John Tucker, Bloomberg Radio. All right, John, thanks. And a disclaimer, Michael Bloomberg, founder and majority owner of Bloomberg Radio parent Bloomberg LP, donates to groups that support gun control. All right, Karen, in uh, legal news this morning, Donald Trump has lost his third try in a week to delay his Manhattan hush money trial. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. The week legally has had his attorneys trying to delay the trial on charges that he faked business records to cover up a sex scandal, the so-called hush money trial. His attorneys say they want to delay based on several rulings that have been made, including waiting until after the final ruling comes down on immunity. Now, this latest ruling could be heard by a panel of five appellate court justices going forward, but it would be nearly impossible for the court to hear and rule before the trial's beginning. Jury selection is scheduled for Monday the 15th. Ed back. Bloomberg Radio. All right, Ed, thanks. Well, staying in Manhattan, there is not as much of a hush in New York City office buildings. The return to work rate is now close to 80 percent of where it was before the pandemic. We get more from Bloomberg's Doug Krisner. The data come from Placer AI. They show how Wall Street firms, including Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, helped drive New York City's return to office rate. A similar rebound was also seen in Miami, with a rate of 78 percent. Last year, the return to office rates for these two cities were the highest among seven major U.S. markets. They were also above the national average of about 63 percent. San Francisco saw the greatest growth in office visitations in 2023. However, it still lagged behind other major cities with an RTO rate of 45%. In New York, I'm Doug Krisner, Bloomberg Radio. Okay, Doug, thanks for watching. Shares of Alpine Immune Sciences on some deal news this morning. They're up 36% in early trading. The kidney drug developer is being bought by Vertex Pharmaceuticals for $4.9 billion in cash. And it's time now for a look at some of the other stories making news in New York and around the world. For that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. House Republicans have failed to advance a bill that would renew the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. FISA gives law enforcement the authority to monitor suspicious interactions with foreign adversaries. After former President Trump posted kill FISA, 19 Republicans voted against the procedural vote, despite House Speaker Mike Johnson urging them to approve it. Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw of Texas says he believes the law's renewal is necessary for the U.S. to monitor bad actors all over the world. You lose our collection on our adversaries. That's that's one of the most seriously bad things that I can think of happening. I've, ne I've never been worried like I'm worried now. However, critics on both sides of the aisle say that Americans often get surveilled improperly because of it. The fallout continues in the fight over a newly revived 1864 Arizona law criminalizing abortion throughout pregnancy unless a woman's life is at risk. The Arizona legislature devolved into jeering yesterday as Republican lawmakers shut down discussion on a proposed repeal of the law. The Arizona Supreme Court cleared the way this week for enforcing the pre-statehood abortion ban throughout pregnancy without exceptions for rape or incest. Democratic State Senator Ana Hernandez called the GOP bloc politically foolish. It's not about convincing somebody to have an abortion or not. That is their choice. This is about do we trust the people to make the best decision for themselves? And we're saying, yes, we do. A proposed ballot initiative may ask voters in November whether to place abortion protections into the state uh, constitution. New York City is fighting back against people who steal packages delivered to residents. City officials have now introduced new public delivery lockers. Each locker can hold 25 packages at one time. New York Mayor Eric Adams. New Yorkers will be able to receive and send packages using secure lockers on public sidewalks. The program is available to all New Yorkers 24-7, and it is the favorite four-letter word of New Yorkers. 
free. Currently, seven lockers are installed around the city, including in Brooklyn and Hell's Kitchen. Global News 24 hours a day and whenever you want it with the Bloomberg News Now. I'm Michael Barr, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, Michael Barr, thank you. Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update with John Stashauer. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. There hasn't been a Masters without a drop of rain since 2018. It rains in the forecast for this morning. Sounds like they'll get at least some of the opening round in. It is expected to be clear skies the rest of the weekend. The 88th Masters, John Rahm, the defending champ, Scotty Scheffler, won two years ago. Here's the world number one on plane, Augusta National. I mean, to me, it's just a special place. It's kind of the mecca for us growing up being, you know, growing up here in the States and, um, you know, being Americans. I think this is the tournament that we all look for. And to be here on property every year is extremely special. And, um, I mean, it seems like it all stands out. Everything is, is done so well here. Yesterday's par three won by Ricky Fowler. No one has ever won it and then won the green jacket. There were five holes and one in the event, including one by Gary Woodland, who's playing the Masters after undergoing brain surgery last fall. At the stadium, Marlins beat the Yankees 5-2. Jake Berger, a three-run homer off Marcus Stroman. John Carlos Stanton homered for the Yanks. Mets and Braves rained out in Atlanta. The Red Sox had a 5 nothing lead in the sixth inning. Lost to the Orioles 7-5. 20-year-old Jackson Holland. Holiday went 0 for 4 in his big league debut for Baltimore. He's the son of Matt Holiday. He's considered MLB's top prospect. Giants beat the National 7 1. Cleveland topped the White Sox. The Guardians have brothers in their lineup. And Bo and Josh Naylor both homered in the fourth inning. Big NBA game for first place in the West. Denver beat Minnesota. Nicole Jokic scored 41. The Nets beat Toronto 106 102. The Knicks play tonight in Boston. Rangers trying to finish first overall. They host Philadelphia. The Islanders seeking a playoff berth. They're home for Montreal. The WNBA TV schedule is out. 36 of Indiana's 40 games will be on national TV. The Fever expected to draft Caitlin Clark on Monday. John Stashauer, Bloomberg Sports. Karen, Nathan. All right, John Stashauer, thank you. S&P futures down two tenths of a percent. So are Dow futures. NASDAQ futures down about the same. And the 10-year Treasury yield is at 4.56%. Coast to coast on Bloomberg Radio, nationwide on Sirius XM, and around the world on Bloomberg.com and the Bloomberg Business app. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. Well, the third month was definitely not the charm on the road to disinflation. The March Consumer Price Index did come in hotter than expected once again, giving investors pushing back bets on rate cut timing from the Federal Reserve. For more... We're joined by City U.S. economist Veronica Clark. Veronica, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, is the road to disinflation still bumpy, or is this third in a row CPI hotness the new trend? Yeah, I mean, I think most Fed officials will probably still characterize this as bumpy. Um, of course, it will be core PCE infl- inflation that matters most for for, Fed, for the Fed, um, and we'll we'll see what that comes out today once we get details of, of PPI data. Um, but I think you know maybe the hawks are getting a bit more uncomfortable, and it does kind of get harder to to come to a consensus to cut maybe as soon as June. Um, but there are a lot of uncertainties, of course, with all the other data that we're going to get before June also. Do you guys over at City count yourselves as hawks? Are you getting more uncomfortable yourselves? No, not necessarily. Um, we're we're probably one of the more dovish forecasts out there right now. We think the Fed is, is still cutting in June um, and then cutting every meeting after June. Um, so that is 125 basis points of cuts this year. That's well more than, than what's priced right now. Um, but I think for us, you know, we are trying to be more forward looking. Um, we are trying to you know, assess the, the other types of data that we, we might see over the coming months, you know, labor market data that, you know, has been very strong, but but some of the details look a bit precarious. And I think the, the Fed would be very dovish if we you know were getting some weaker labor market data. Yeah, first cut in June is looking more and more like a bold call, given the data mm-hmm. that we have seen so far. And some of the commentary that we're hearing from the likes of Larry Summers, the former Treasury Secretary, who was on Bloomberg yesterday, saying maybe we need to hold out the possibility that the next move from the Fed is a hike. I mean, how do you push <laughs> back against that? Yeah, I mean, I think that is probably pretty unlikely. I think at least Fed officials will see at least that the current level of rates is restrictive. Um, and we've heard that from, from most Fed officials, certainly from Chair Powell. Um, and so if, you know, inflation is coming in a bit hotter than than, comfort- than they're comfortable with, they're not you know getting that further confidence 
that they want to see. Um, it's not necessarily that we're talking about hikes again. They would probably just leave rates elevated for, for a bit longer. We're just talking about pushing out those cuts. What is it that's keeping these price pressures so sticky? What are you seeing in the data that has inflation where it is and has you still thinking that there is still room for the Fed to make a cut? Yeah, I mean, we we honestly do still see a lot of of stickiness in services inflation. Um, So we've seen that for a while in in shelter inflation, which which should be slowing at some point, you know, as we're getting into to later this year. Um, but a lot of the strength in yesterday's CPI data um, was in non-shelter services. Um, actually, about half of that strength in non-shelter services had to do with auto insurance, um, which interestingly does not go into the Fed's preferred PCE inflation measure. Um, but even in, in PCE inflation, I think we're, we're still seeing a lot of stickiness to, to services inflation, and that, you know, has to do with you know, a tight labor market. We're still running wages that are around four to five percent or so. That's a bit stronger than you want to see um, to be consistent with two percent inflation. Um, so there is still some loosening to go. Um, but I think we do see the signs in in the labor market details and demand for workers hiring that has really slowed down. Um, that leads us to think we are going into a, a much looser labor market. So we only have about 30 seconds left here, Veronica. What are you expecting when it comes to producer prices out this morning and whether that could change the narrative that we're getting in this market? Yeah, this one would, could be interesting. There's a couple things to watch. You know, we're, we're looking at you know, the, the transportation and the goods kind of compo- components of, of PPI data, and that could be a bit stronger. Um, we might see a, a stronger headline PPI increase. Um, but most importantly today, we're, we're watching some very specific components um, that go into our mapping of core PCE inflation for March. And, of course, that's what the Fed will care most about. Um, so we are expecting to see some strength in components like medical services, certain financial services, um, and that could mean that forecasters are expecting, you know, a bit stronger core PCE even than we had in, in February. We had a, a 26 basis point increase in February. We're mm-hmm. tracking at around 30 basis points right now. Um, that could mean that we're just pushing these these cuts further out. <laughs> uh, market continues to price out cuts, yeah, yeah. but that might be a little bit premature. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.